All right, so this is a review on the movie Coming to America. Um, not the first one, but Coming to America, the sequel. Um, so basically, I want to talk about this movie without, you know, giving it away, right? Like, without giving about away what happened, what didn't happen, blah, blah, blah. First of all, I definitely would re recommend to go watch the movie. But don't, do not watch the movie with an expectation. You see, one thing I started to realize over the time, you know, when, since it was announced, yeah, um, that it was going to be released, that they were making it. Like, other people, there's so many people having this expectation of, oh, it's got to be, it's be just as good or, no, don't ruin, don't ruin it, this, that, and the third. It's like, oh, it's not necessary. I don't think it's going to be funny, blah, blah, blah. And then when I saw the trailer, when I saw the first trailer, I was like, nah, this ain't it. When I say nah, that's not it. It wasn't because there wasn't some parts of it that wasn't funny or I didn't get. It was the thing of that the references, the African references, um, in terms of, you know, I think it was a barbershop banter thing. You see what I mean? I was like, right, this is mad. Like, why are they doing that? Then I realised, after, even after watching the movie, yeah, and I could talk about this scene in particular, and I'm not going to talk about this particular scene, yeah, without giving away too much details about the movie. Is like if you if you're familiar or familiar with going to the barbers, I don't know if it know in like hair salons or anything like that. One thing for certain in barber shops, yeah, there's always barber shop banter, yeah, always. And the barber shop banter is not necessarily a thing where everything that anyone says in the barbershop is 100% accurate. Most times it's ignorance. Do you see what I'm saying? Most times it's ignorance. It's all for laughs. It's, you know what I mean? It's nothing serious. Um, and so, yeah, like, it was interesting. And then there was one part. So, in fact, let me get back to the property. So there is that part where they do have that, that situation when it with um um the prince of Zamunda um does or which is if you don't know that's Eddie Murphy's character um like they, you know they do have that that banter you see what I mean and then there is someone else that tries to do the banter back do you see what I mean but they're like no 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 you can't say that do you see what I mean so that gave me a feeling of oh so yeah Barbershop banter is just barbershop banter, but it's, there's levels to it. Like, there's, there's levels to it. There's no, you know, there's, yeah. So, yeah. Other than that, though, um, the one thing that I did like about this this, this movie is the fact that it was like an all-star studded cast. Now, what's interesting is um, the comparisons between the first one and the second one, right? So the first one, was again also an all star all star started cast, but I didn't realize, nor was I really aware at the time, because one, I wasn't even literally born when that first was released. I was still in my mum's stomach blood. Do you see what I'm saying? Like I was given my mum gave birth to me like literally the next month. Do you see what I mean? She gave birth to me the next month, so that's interesting knowing that. But so it's still a cult classic. It's still a um, it's still something I find funny. It's something I find hilarious. There's something in it that I always remember. Like, like I've got a balcony, so you know when the summertime comes, you best believe I'm gonna be I'm gonna be saying, "Good morning, my neighbors." And if someone says, "Hey, fuck you," I'm gonna say, "Yes, fuck you too." Ah, now I'm playing. Well, no, I'm not playing. If I'm in that 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 mindset that that I do want to say hello to the neighbors that way, I will do it. Racks, but anyway, um, yeah, so, um, what else I'm gonna say? So, and what's interesting is that, um, another thing with the comparisons is, um, what was I gonna say? Yeah, so another thing with the comparisons is because I, I watched it when I was a child, didn't it? The, the first one, and then also in my teenage and also in my adulthood again because the movie's that great. But I noticed also in the second one, yeah, there is the the main 
Alright, there's several main characters, right? But the main character, yeah, or the main characters, should I say, both of them are like my age. So imagine, this is what's so mad. The first one came out 32 years ago. 32 years ago, yeah, in 1988, yeah. Yes, I'm showing my age, I don't care. The point I'm trying to make is the actors and the actress main actor and main actress in it aside from Eddie Murphy and Arsenio Hall's character like they are 32 years old so they were literally either just being born or they weren't they were born if, yeah they're the same age as when the first one came up basically you know what I mean so that's how long ago it was so it's it's good to see that long longevity of it in terms of because you're thinking or i was thinking how are they going to pull this off what they're gonna what are they going to talk about and i'm like well you know what eddie murphy is the goal he's the goal of comedians you get you could you can say rich deprive if you want to you can say uh red fox if you want to you can say dave Chappelle if you want to you can say keenan wayans if you want to because i don't think he gets as much credit as 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 he should but Eddie Murphy, like, when it comes to movies, when it comes to movies, like, he has been on a roll, as far as I'm aware, since the 80s. Like, he's been on a roll, like, hit after hit after hit after hit after hit. Like, I don't think he's ever missed. I don't think he's ever missed. And I'm not talking about the fact of, of box it off itself. Yeah, that's nice, that's cool. That's good for the bank balance for him and for the production and the management production and all them people there in it, all those companies there. Like, cool. What I'm talking about is the fact of creating something that is a staple in homes and minds for generations to come. Yeah, Harlem Nights, which also featured Richard Pryor, by the way. In case you're just wondering, then there's uh, I believe. Daddy Daycare was one of his as well. Then there's Beverly, um, is it Beverly Hill? No, Beverly Hill Cops. Then there is, um, uh, the Night, the Night Professor. Yeah, the Night Professor. Then there is also, there was something else. There's so many. Um, Oh, I, I can't remember the other one, but it's, it's yeah, there's so many, there's literally so many. Then obviously he's the voice of Donkey in, 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 in Shrek. You see what I mean? Like, so it's a thing of, like, he adds to people's childhood. You know what I mean? Like, and he does it in a, in a unique way. Yeah, but aside from Eddie Murphy as well, yeah, Arsenio does his thing. You know what I mean? Like, he doesn't get as much credit and rating that he deserves evil. Like, he's... He's a G in this thing. You know what I mean? Like, he needs to... I say in the Spring Monkey's talk show, I hope, I hope so, because that was another great thing. And hear him in the interview talking about, you know, how how um, how it was back then. It's interesting to see the level of impact he had. Do you see what I mean? But anyway, um, back to the movie. Because um, I, I feel like I'm tearing off into something completely different. Back to the movie. Look, look at the end of the day, I want to give the movie 10 out of 10. Like ten out of ten, like f like within the first. I don't want to say within whatever minutes or whatever, because then now you're gonna to expect to laugh within that, and if you don't laugh, then you're like, what? All I'm gonna say is watch it with an open mind. For me, I watched it with an open mind, had no expectations, and I was just laughing hysterically, laughing hysterically. The good thing is, as much as I want to watch this. I wanted to watch this in, you know, the cinema, you know, but unfortunately, but fortunately, we're able to watch this from the, our own devices at home, at the comfort, wherever we are, right? So at least you can, you can watch it on your phone, your TV, whatever. Um, it's on Amazon Prime, yeah? So it's a thing of, at least now you can pause it. So it's a thing of, if you're laughing at a particular scene or a particular moment, yeah? You know what I mean? You can at least pause it. You can at least rewind it. And if you like the movie so much, again, you can rewatch it there and then. There's no need to 
go to the movies again, to the cinemas and re-watch and re-watch or wait until the DVD comes out. You can just re-watch it there and then. Do you see what I'm saying? So there's, there's benefits to this thing. Yeah, so when you see this technology situation happen, don't sweat it. Get me? Because there's a lot of things that initially work in your favour as a consumer. Yeah? I don't know too much on the, on the, on the back end of the... Um, of the actors and all that stuff there yeah but also before i forget before i forget it's important i talk about this right the accents right there is a thing where most people would say um oh their their, their, their african accents are poor first of all first of all zamunda is a fictional place yeah and even in Black Panther, Wakanda is a fictional place. So if the accents are not 100% accurate, then the, the, the place is fictional. So who gives a damn? Do you see what I mean? Now, here's the thing. If they were going to say, okay, well, they're from South Africa or they're, they're from Zimbabwe or they're from Botswana or they're from, you know what I mean? From these regions here, which I believe they do have a collection of those type of accents and they're trying to bring that in, then fair enough. But one thing I feel like they did that, play, they played it very smart, was featuring, I need to get her name correct. No, let me bring up her name properly because I don't want to get this wrong. Because I even put up a video with her, uh, with her interview and I even highlighted her saying her name. So I am not going to get this wrong, all right? But before I um, even talk about that, I just like the fact that there. Um, I think David was featured in it for for a short while. Um, you know, th there was one there was one feature that I, I just didn't get, like the rapper Rick Ross. Why was he in there? I didn't know he he acted. Um, he had like a little cameo, and then um, yeah, Michael Blackson. I believe he should have had uh, had 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 much more of a a, a, a role, but. Sometimes you can have that little cameo and you can still be effective. Like Samuel Jackson, yeah, let me tell you something about Samuel Jackson. Although he wasn't in this one, um, which is funny because he was in the first one. Um, again, he played a small cameo in that movie. Do you see what I'm saying? So I need you to understand that sometimes it's it's not a thing where, sorry, give me a second, you know when you try to pull up side. Oh, raw. Screen, okay, I'm now I'm clocking it right. Um, okay, Kenya Barris is yeah. Anyway, so obviously I'm gonna go through the cast of some of them. Yeah, so there's Eddie Murphy, then there's J James L. Jones, Shari Headley, uh, Wesley Snipes, um, Arsenio Hall. Uh, obviously Kiki Lane. Who I genuinely believe it is going to be a, a, a superhero on a black person or black girl or black woman. She definitely needs that role, one hundred percent. Her athleticism, like the way she moves, like I, she's different with it. She's different with it. Um, then there's Leslie Jones, like she, uh, like before I never used to really like her, her acting style. Like I like her comedy now and again, but it's the fact of she she brought it home for me in this movie you know what i mean um then obviously john amos returned as well and then jermaine fowler was it isn't it tiana taylor her entrance you see when you see her entrance in this movie all right then roll to me is in it as well lou anderson returns um paul bates returns i already mentioned michael blackson before i mentioned david doe vanessa bell um Callaway returns, Tracy Morgan. Um, uh, who else is there? There's bare people in it. And also, um, I'm trying to get to it because I can't even find it. Um, um, shout and hang on. Give me a second, give me a second. Because there is one person here. Yeah? Oh, it's not even here. Yeah, it's not even there, but basically, where I'm looking at, there's not, it's not there. But if I go to the actual 
preferring you would will say it. But anyway, the person I was gonna mention that I'm glad they, they got in there was Nozamo. Like she is a South African actress and I'm glad that they uh, introduced a South African actress in there. Um simply because if you if you look at certain movies, right? And you're de you're depicting um you're depicting a, a certain style of Africa. You want to bring some level of authenticity into it, and that's what I believe she did. You know what I mean? And uh, and um, it was it was great to see. You know what I mean? It's great to see. Um, and I'm not saying that Africa is that all that way. Blah blah blah. I'm not saying that. But it's just the fact of sometimes I feel it's great to have um, that impact, right? So. Where is it? I wanna um I wanna get the forecast and crew properly. See this is a long review in it, but it's worth it. Alright, so the cast is about 170, right? So like I said, Eddie Murphy, a senior home, Jermaine Fowler, Leslie Jones, Tracy Morgan, Kiki Lane, Shari Headley, Wesley Snipes, James L. Jones, John Amos, Tiana Taylor, Vanessa Bell Calloway. Paul Lacks, her character's fucking hilarious. It's wrong, but it's hilarious. Paul Bates, not Nomzamo, uh, Bella, Mur Bella Murphy, which is, if you're wondering, who's Bella Mur doesn't that, is that? Yes, that is her Eddie Murphy's daughter, which is interesting. She plays her, she plays things that in it, too much. She plays the daughter of Prince Hakeem. So she practically, she practically being herself, really. We can kind of deep it, you know what I mean? Because you you can regard, um, you know, Eddie Murphy's royalty in comedy. You know what I'm saying? Um, then there's uh, Morgan Freeman. Uh, I don't want to get this girl's name wrong, but uh, Akele Love. Um, he did a great job too. Do you know what I mean? Like there was one particular role that just had me creasing up. Um, Obviously, I mentioned a role to me. Then there's Lou, Louis Anderson, Trevor Noah. Um, then there's, I mentioned uh, Michael Blackson. Then there's Clint Smith. Then there's Ke Kevin T. DeWitt. Then there's Lunell, Rodney Perry, Nav Green. Like, there's bare people in this. Then there's On Vogue. Then there's also, uh, uh, what's her name? Gladys Knight. That's what I forgot to mention. I'm glad I mentioned this now. I'm going to mention it now. She was looking like a typical Yoruba auntie. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying on that. I'm not going to say anything else more. Just watch the damn movie. Um, then Saw of Pepper was in there as well. Um, yeah, man. There's bare people up in there. Bare people. So, with that in mind, listen. 10 out of 10 for the movie. 10 out of 10. Just go watch the movie. Um, but like I said, with the accents, don't worry about the accents. And plus with the accents, we're talking about African accents. There's different accents in Africa. <laughs> there's... Africa is not one country, it's a continent, yeah? And there's different countries within that continent, and even within certain regions, yeah, there are different accents, let alone different languages. Do you see what I'm saying? So, all that accent there, you know what I mean? But I'm, I'm glad that this movie came out, do you know what I mean? Especially in this time. Um, but anyway, like I said, if you want good laughs, go watch the movie. Um, I'm going to put the link in the description box below because it is on Amazon Prime um, which is kind of weird for me to say nowadays because it's like it's hard to say but maybe I might do more of these type of things watch, watch movies that are on like these these streaming platforms or whatever and then you know review them put the link in b below and then you can watch it innit so if you want to support whatever we're doing on the Acapulco Trust the link to that is in the description box below as well so yeah uh, any other thing you want to react to next or do a review on or we'll talk about leave that in the comment section below hit the subscribe button hit the bell notification because you never know the video you suggest might just be next but also before i forget i want you to keep this in mind this is a romantic comedy movie this isn't about the the reality of how africa is or will be you see what i mean this is just a romanticized literally a romanticized type of comedy and it's like you know if you really want to see what Africa looks like, go visit there. Simple as that. All right? Yeah.